is a presentation of Real Wise Productions and Comey Media Incorporated. Is Deion Sanders being a bully to the media? Hmm? Next on Mentality. Welcome to another installment of Mentality, where iron sharpens iron in the realm of health, wealth, mental health, entrepreneurship, love, and brotherhood, all from a man's perspective. I am one of the co-hosts of this program, Cole Johnson, a.k.a. the Mad Scientist and the EP of All EPs, and I am joined, as always, by the other co-hosts of this program, the man that you affectionately know as Wise All, let me see, King Petty, Sometimes you see Bizarre Wise coming to the picture. And yes, the James Lipton of the crew. Your boy and mine, W-I-Z-E, a.k.a. Wise El Jefe. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, brother. I'm doing good. I can't complain. Can't complain. Dominique Jones was charged with carrying a concealed weapon without a permit. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm going on forgetting that I'm using the government. No, this is Lil Baby. Yes, the, the rapper that you've seen the last few years. Well, he was arrested on a gun charge in the Las Vegas area. Uh, the rapper known for such songs as Yes Indeed and Drip Too Hard. He was arrested on Monday at 5 a.m. after an incident on uh, South Las Vegas Boulevard. Of course, that's on the north end of the Strip. And this is Las Vegas Metropolitan Police telling you as he today this in an email. Law enforcement did not provide specific details about what led to the arrest. Uh, however, uh, uh, Drew, Fe uh, Drew Feinling and David Chesnoff, Jones, uh, the, well, Lil Baby's dis uh, defense attorneys, they told you as he today in a statement, they are, quote, actively investigating the facts and circumstances surrounding his arrest in Las Vegas. To be clear, Dominique Jones has a valid Georgia carrying, conce carrying a concealed weapon permit. Close quote. Now, my question to you, sir, I know that you uh, definitely are one who believes in gun ownership. Do you believe the gun laws in general are too limiting for gun owners. Too what? Limiting. Uh, is it too restrictive? Um, uh, if you if you if you if you look at what happened in Vegas, I can understand why they don't want people with guns running around with guns in in, in Vegas. Um, yeah, the, the 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 mass shooting the incident took place a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I I can understand, but also um, he he's a concealed carrier in in, in Georgia. Mm -hmm. I think if that's the case, right? When in a situation like that, where if you have a concealed car carriers in a, one state, that means you've mm -hmm. been you've been vetted. They they've, they've checked your background. You, like here in Pennsylvania. You get a background check. Uh, you got to go to the sheriff's department, get your fingerprints, all this stuff. Right. So I think once you do something like that, I think it should be universal. 
If, I think if you if you're if you if you're a licensed carrier in Georgia and you're visiting another state, I would I would I, I would say that you you notify local authorities that you're in town with your weapon and you're a registered gun owner and and let, if you could do stuff like that, yes. Hmm. But I, I, but yeah, I, I could, but I can understand why Vegas is the way it is right now. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, and, and I, I totally forgot about the the mass uh, the mass shooting incident that took place. I forget what year. I know it was around October, but I forget which year. But yeah, yeah, um, authorities probably are. are on high alert probably and have been ever since then and, and yeah i could totally get that well to little baby i hope that uh, you can understand uh, you, know, you may need to be just a wee bit more careful carrying your piece around other places i guess but uh, i guess you'll live and learn allison holker who was married to stephen boss but you know him better as twitch unfortunately until his death in the late fall of 2022, is cluing fans in to a new love in her life. The dancer, and so you can think you can dance judge, on Wednesday shared a simple Instagram post seemingly soft launching a new romance. In the video, a shadow on the ground appears to show her holding hands with another person. Considering that you are a widower, uh, what advice do you have for anyone going through healing after the death of a spouse? Oh man, um, take your time. Um, you, I know at that at at that moment when when you when it's fresh and everything, it seems like you'll never fall in love again, or you will never find someone like that person again. Um, just just take your time and 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 God will. We'll, we'll, We'll take care of you, man, and he'll get you through it. Like for, for me, um, I, I was blessed that I was to find and find love again and and get married and 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 so I, I I lucked out. Um, but um, just take my my thing would be just take your time. Conservative evangelical Christian voters continue to wrestle with a shifting Republican stance on abortion. With former President Donald Trump and his running mate J.D. Vance further agitating that confusion with recent statements about a federal abortion ban. Stalwart evangelical supporters of Trump called out the GOP presidential nominee for taking a less hardline stance against abortion, going as far as to say Trump is no less pro-choice than those crummy Democratic nominees, uh, Co uh, Vice President Kamala Harris and Governor Walls. <laughs> Influential leaders within the Nashville-based, my city, Southern Baptist Convention and other prominent evangelical figures are increasingly expressing a sense of disillusionment and are outright saying that they won't vote for Trump come November. <coughs> sorry, I just, sorry, I have an allergy, I'm sorry. I hope y'all didn't hear that. But my question to you, sir, will this issue actually lose the evangelicals for Trump? No. Not at all. Um, they can say whatever the, the, the they can say whatever they want to say, but um, uh, how can I put this? Oh, uh, they're not voting for the black woman. Oh, you going raw? Oh, okay. Ooh. You going straight raw? Oh, okay. They're not voting for the black woman. They're not. Yeah. Let, me, let, let me look for that. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, yes, sir. No lie to be found. No. Uh, I know. Unfortunately, I don't see the evangelicals, especially the southern variety. Uh, no, Kamala. no. I, I don't. I don't see that either. 
Uh, and look, abortion has been a wishy-washy issue for Trump anyway. Remember, the dude used to be a registered Democrat, and he supported abortion at one time. So you have yeah. that. He was pro-choice, and then when he decided to run, he flip-flopped because, of course, we, we know what he does. So. <sighs> Mm. I'm the cult of personality, the cult of personality, the cult of personality. So what? What I what I what, what it was? Oh, this is just completely different. This is completely mm. off that. Um. So I I had known that um because we're both big huge wrestling fans, right? And um. That uh, that that racist piece of crap, Hulk Hogan, was at the God, was at the um, Republican National Convention, whatever. Republican, yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. Um, he had one of the most um, memorable speeches in that convention. Yeah, it was memorable because it sucked. Oh wow! <laughs> Hulk of Trump maniacs, uh, like please, dude, dude you use a real racist piece of shit and um. So of course you would you would would you would feel at home talking to Donald and stuff like that because let's, let's face it you you're you're an adulterer um you you're you're a union breaker as Jesse the Body Ventura would say yeah he's so been saying that for would, thirty years yeah so you we would say why we could understand why you would. You would be a, a, a on Donald Trump's team, so I just wanted to touch on that a little right quick. <laughs> oh, so basically, what my partner is saying, my brother is saying, is that with the Hulk Hogan and Kamala Harris being the next president of the United States, let me see if I could put it in the way that he could do it. Quote that don't work for me, brother. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I think that works. We're just getting started. Mentality will return. What's up, everybody? This is Information Man and the Information Man Show. Now, what I do is hard cutting edge analysis, assessment of what's happening in our world today, whether it be news, politics, current events, cultural issues, social issues, commentaries, what I do over here. Most of all is what we try to do here on the Information Man Show is try to get to a solution to the problems that we see today. Life. Scratching and clawing to overcome adversities in life. Family. That's what I love about our children. Mm -hmm. God instilled that in us, and oh, thank yeah. God they carry on that torch. Marriage. We struggled in different ways, naturally, as husband and wife. And God. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto mm -hmm. me. Join the husband and wife team of Ben Southerth Jr. and Irene Southerth as they give you the full scope of life. BS3 Network proudly presents the Suds Are Us podcast live every Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central. Welcome back to Mentality, where men are men and not Hulk Hogan.
with Wise LFA, I am Cole Johnson. And again, we are going to be eschewing celebrity style once again. Actually, for a bigger reason, because right now, the bigger celebrity seems to be Kamala Harris. Yes, the current vice president and the Democratic presidential nominee officially as of two weeks ago. Everybody wanted to have a piece of her. Everybody wanted to get an interview with her. But either her or her team was real savvy and saying, no, it's not quite the time just yet. And after some uh, wrangling, it's happened. So we'll put this in something we call power moves. Vice President Kamala Harris defended her evolving positions on climate policy and border security on Thursday while promising to appoint a Republican to her Demo uh, to her cabinet should she be elected to be president in November during her first sit down interview since becoming the Democrats 2024 presidential nominee. Now, the anchor of CNN, Dana Bash, she covered the notable ground. In this interview, including how Harris learned via uh, a Sunday phone call back on July 21st that President Joe Biden was going to end his reelection bid and endorse his vice president as his replacement. Harris had just finished eating pancakes with her young nieces and other family members while visiting her in Washington when she received that call from Biden. And she said, quote, I asked him, are you sure? And he said, Yes. Close quote. Now, also in that interview, joining her was her running mate, Minnesota's governor and the Democratic vice presidential nominee, Tim Walls, who I think is pre becoming even a bigger celebrity than even Kamala herself is. Now, I will begin by asking this. Now, during this interview, she supposedly addressed flip flopping and or issue takes on her opponent in the upcoming general election. Do you think she should have waited so long to take an interview being the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee? Um, no, no. I, I think she did it the right way. Um, she did it when she was ready. Um, mm. And then you get the people Oh, she should have did it alone. Why she have to have a vice president there? Oh, mm -hmm. she can't. Um, because you idiots don't know what a, a united front means. The, these these are two people that truly like each other, who like being in the same space, who truly believe in each other. Unlike certain oh, other people, who at one point. You had your 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 choice of Republican vice president call your nominee Hitler, and, and and we know how they truly feel of how JD Vance truly feels about Trump. He can't stand him, so that's <laughs> why they I haven't seen them together since the, the the convention. Yeah, I was about to say probably since they yeah since they wrapped their convention. And that's now almost, well, it's now rounding into September. So it's at least six weeks. Yeah. Oh, and yes, you're correct. Uh, uh, the vice presidential nominee, uh, Senator Vance, did at one time say that uh, he was, quote, a proud never Trumper. Close quote. Mm -hmm. That came out of his what the Republican vice presidential nominee actually did say that at one time, but he went further to uh, kiss the ring a few years later. Just thinking on strategy, uh, why do you believe it took so long for the Harris campaign to accept this interview? Because you did, there was there was a lot of things going on. She she had to 
Listen, this happened quickly, man. This this transition happened quickly. Right. And so she had to get her together. Uh, cause right after that she had to prepare she had to prepare herself for for the Democratic National Convention. And um yeah. it's been a whirlwind, man. She's been have she's been campaigning all over the country, going on traveling all over. So she's really been work hard at work. And so she finally sits down for an interview and people still talk shit about it. And and listen, and she she's she kind of flip flopped on a couple of things like that the, the no fracking, right? Frack, yes, fracking, and then mm-hmm. um, I don't. Okay, they want. They want she, I'm sure she does want a secure border. Yeah, but she also believes she's also believes in 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 in, in being a humanitarian and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But she she is for she she. She is for a strong. She believes. She believes in in the law, and she feels yes. If people illegal immigrants break the law, then yeah, that that's, that's talking about that. She's flip flopping on that. It, she, they, whatever they're gonna, see, whatever she says, they're gonna still badger badger her and, and say whatever they're gonna say about her. Yeah, I agree. And, and so, listen, she did the interview. To me, went well. It looked like. Again, it showed the unified front. Um, Tim Walls, to me, is the anti JD Vance. Isn't he ever? Like JD Vance to me looks like a a, a, a slick. Oh, oh no! Those, uh, one of those slick. Um, oh no! Snake charming guy. One of they be selling those snake oils or whatever the. Oh, yeah, yeah, he looks like one of those guys. Oh no. <laughs> oh, note to self. Wyatt has no love for JD Vance. All right. Um <laughs> cuz cuz JD Vance to me is a is he has no balls. Oh. None? None. Wow. None. No mm. balls. Mm. Cause, Cause you say one thing, and all of a sudden, cause now you're a vice president nominee, you're you're, you're taking back what you said. No, you already said it. <laughs> you we truly know how you feel about your ball, about your future boss if he gets elected. <laughs> yeah, because you stated it years ago, and well, you're not really wholeheartedly trying to deny it now, but yeah. But this is what I find hilarious about about this interview. Not necessarily Kamala, and not even with the fact that she actually decided to have uh, Governor Walls there in the interview with her. The Republicans acted as though this was a crime against humanity to have a presidential nominee have the vice presidential nominee to sit alongside them. So why do you believe the Republicans hate the fact that Governor Walsh joined the vice president? in Because they can't do it. They can't do it. You can't have Tim. You can't have J.D. Vance and Donald Trump sit down together and do an interview. Because first of all, um, J.D. Vance won't get a word in. Because Donald Trump is going to dominate because he, he's that big of an ego and narcissist that it's all about me, 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 me. Yes, Trump floated the idea that he would not tax tipped workers. That would be great. And then Kamala said, yeah, oh, that sounds like yeah. a great idea. I would do such a thing, too, as well. Yeah, jumped rolling on that. Why, yeah. why my man really had a, a, a hissy feel like, that was my idea. That was my idea. I thought of it first. Oh Lord! See, so that's the this is the problem. This is why the, the, she's and, stealing and, my idea. She's stealing my idea. I told you. I told you. Yeah. Yeah. Good Lord. <laughs> uh, but it was good actually to see this interview. 
but I only have one issue with it, just one. It definitely isn't with Governor Walls there. It isn't the fact that it seemed a little informal. I actually like that because I think it plays along the lines of what we probably were geared up for just a few weeks back with the Democratic National Convention that that yeah this is a this is an attorney general of the city of San Francisco who then became the attorney general of the state of California who then turned into a senator for uh for California and now she's the vice president so yeah i get that the the credentials are there but i i do love the fact that it was a more informal type of feel because we we're starting to get this informal ish not necessarily uh, amateurish, but an informal-ish feel about her campaign. But the one issue that I seem to have is that we seem to get on the periphery of what she wants to do with policy, but we're not getting something honed in. And that was the same thing that I, I felt with her acceptance speech, too. Why are we still searching for answers with Kamala Harris in terms of overall policy? Cause their, cause their thing is, oh, she doesn't know policy. She doesn't do policy. When on the other side of the aisle, <laughs> they, they, they all they, they, I have not heard them discussing policy. All I've heard them discussing was name calling, and and be like, oh, they talked about me, so should I continue to, should I continue to say bad things about them? It's like. You, and on one, one side, you have Kamala and Tim Walls who want who want to discuss policy and focus on policy. And then the other side, you have Trump and J.D. Vance, and all they can do is talk, is is name call and mudsling. Yeah. Talk about crowd sizes. And and all, and, all, and nothing and nothing that has to do with what are you going to do to change the country? What are you going to do to improve the country? None of that. You see, with that last part of the, of your answer, it makes me think that Trump and I think you were seeing this too. Definitely two months ago, I, I really believe the answer that he was going to give you, and he he was going to have this have this work all the way until he became uh, the president again was, quote, I ain't Biden, close quote. And that would pretty much ride the day. Bro, bro, all right. So um, me and the wife have been watching. We've been watching a lot of TV news and stuff like that. And, and and you know I'm not one to watch news, but the mm-hmm. wife is really into the election and everything. So we sit down mm-hmm. and we watch, and we watch a lot of the Daily Show. And I'm dying with the Daily Show. I'm hilarious, hilarious. And my man needs to come up with some new stuff because everything he said about Biden, mm-hmm. oh his IQ, his IQ. He goes and uses it for Kamala. He, it was just, it was just, he just, everything he was saying about Biden, he has said about Kamala. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he can't come up with something unique for her yet. No. Yeah. Other than, is she Indian? Is she black? Well, when she came out, she was Indian, and then all a few years ago, he yeah. turned out to be black. And wh- what is she? What is she? She's both, man. <laughs> and she's whipping your ass right now. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, you know, it, 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 he was prepared to com- to compete with Sleepy Joe. He mm-hmm. wasn't prepared for someone who's awake. be back in two and two this is a bs3 network presentation i want to 
to do a TED talk, but I don't have anything to talk about yet. I'm getting there. Life is for the living. We're not here that long. You can learn anything you want to learn without any money spent. What do I really enjoy? What do I really want out of life? I am your host, W-I-Z-E. Are you in a life holding pattern? Well, this is for you. Welcome to the Stuck In My Mind podcast. Live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 4 p.m. Central. Drew Willingham. In this case, yeah, you put the blame on Kyle Shanahan for apparently not preparing the team enough for the overtime rules, supposedly. Cole Johnson. Peyton was considered the winner, and he was the darling of all darlings for Gerald. With a special appearance by Tyrone Alize McDummy. Ain't nobody calling me. Text delete. 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 Join these two football enthusiasts as they give you total football talk. Live every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central on the Sertoba Media and the Comey Media YouTube channels. Welcome back to Mentality, where this is a show curated, created, and hmm, and loved on by all men with Wiser FM Cole Johnson. And speaking of all men, Sometimes we have to call to the carpet, let's see if I can find the right word, crappy behavior. Enter former Carolina Panthers quarterback and former New England Patriots quarterback, Cam Newton, who now has a platform of his own on YouTube, uh, both breaking down his sports and being a personality. And why are we talking about him? Well, there's a couple of things he said and... We have to talk about it in something to ponder. Now on his, uh, his platform freaky, well, no, yeah. Funky Friday. I'm sorry. Uh, he invited a psychologist. Her name is uh, Cheyenne Bryant, who, yes, yeah, she has a, a clinical degree, but she sort of keeps it real, too, and sort of has like a hip-hop way of breaking down things. But during this time in interview, the former NFL quarterback turned YouTube personality. He's expressed his desire to have more children with multiple women but let's just chew the marriage. He explained his reasoning for wanting to remain single in a new interview with the celebrity psychologist that I talked about, Dr. Cheyenne Bryant. And during this interview or chat, Newton revealed that he has eight children, the most recent one, March, with three different women. And he says he wants to have more, saying, quote, a lot of people see my situation and think that I'm not high functioning. I'm not married. I have beautiful children. My desire to get married is lower than my fear of divorce. And here's the kicker. I want more. So as you would say, it, Dr. Bryant, I didn't say it. You said it. And I would agree. I'm just taking my time. Close quote. Now, Dr. How many Bryant you said responded. He eight. Thus, said eight. Eight and the and the eighth was born in March. And so Dr. Bryant responded by saying and suggesting that he is not being slow, but instead he's being highly proactive and selectively engaging in his approach. And eventually called his motive selfish and said that he has contributed to contributing to broken homes. And I want to agree with her. My First question to you about this, sir, is why does Cam Newton want to function 
in willing dysfunction. Um, but or I, I don't know who, dysfunction. Who, who, who like who am I to say this is dysfunction? If he can, if he's still a part of these kids' life, if he, if he's a father yeah. to these kids, right? If he's, if he's, yeah. if he's active in their lives, then who am I to say that it's it's a dysfunction? Do I agree with him and 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 in the fact that he thinks like he's Nick Cannon and can have all kid these kids and listen if you can afford to take care of him, God bless you. But the only thing is, with them being with so many different baby mamas. How much time do you really get to spend with each and every one of them? That's my angle right there. That's 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 I, I get what you're saying. And for the record, uh, from what we understand and can ascertain, Cam is very active in all eight of his children's lives. So if I were to say he's an absentee father, no. And we're not claiming that at all. No, so. not claiming that at all. But like you said, though, that is the issue I have. You have three different baby mamas. So that means at least in two of those homes, you're not laying down your head at night. At least two. I would probably say all three. And you may have all eight. But you have to explain to your children, both the, both the boys and the girls, that you aren't having this bond with your mom because you selfishly don't want to create a family with this person. You just want to create a baby with them. But yeah, he can afford it. More power to him. But do you but do you agree with Dr. Bryant's assessment of calling Cam's situation a broken home? Yes, I can see why, why yes. Because, mm -hmm. like I said, He's not there like if you were husband and wife and kids, the father goes to work, comes home, goes to work, comes home. Right. He's not at any, he, he's single, like he said. So that means he doesn't live with any of these women. That's so thinking. he's not coming home to any of these kids unless they're probably staying with him for the weekend or something. But mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, when they're going to school, He's not, he's not there at night helping with homework, right? And 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 again, it, it's 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 crazy because this is what this is what they think of us already that we're over here having all these babies with all these different baby mamas and speak so, on it. So it's it's already that he's just. Adding more fuel to that, to that, to that way of thinking. That oh, mm -hmm. look at look at these black dudes, these athletes. All they do is have baby mamas. Like, dude, man, like, not all of us are like that, right? <laughs> so, so what's his, his what is his path forward in making sure his children grow up with stability? And not necessarily a whole type of dysfunction, but at least stability once they do become adults. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't know how he, unless he, he, he gets like, um, he has like sister wives. <laughs> Knowing him, he might have that. Who knows? <laughs> and have and have them live in, in the house next all next to each other. Heck, yeah, that you, that might be a situation. You, you, but yeah, I just find it crazy. But yeah, um, look, I know that you definitely are not going to down them. I'm not either. It's just that line of thinking has to change, though. That just because mm. mm -hmm. it's already it's just it's just. Like I said, this is they already think about they already think that about us that all oh, all we're good is for baby, to be baby daddies and and stuff right. like that. So, mm -hmm. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You just so you just oh, feed you're it black. Into, so that means yeah, you just feed it into the stereotype. Yeah, 
oh, you're black and you're a man. Oh, yeah, you have rich and homeless. You just want you just want to plow any any woman that's in your vicinity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't 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 get to know a name. Don't get to know personality. No, just look at you and say, yep. Yeah. Yeah. You 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 basically you basically do want to do women like the James Brown uh, song. Hit it and quit it. Uh, uh, no, not all of us. <laughs> <laughs> have thoughts from the throne this is mentality join the transporter to hades your butt and gut becomes one join the reformer of hooker whores this is my daughter placenta booty johnson join the bronze car and ever you are in distress mm -hmm. take off your baseball cap and throw it in the air Join your very own superhero of broadcasting, Chris Bass. So whatever color the crown they get, they palm it and do two circles, and that translates to, I can be the black people. As he takes you through the week's paces in Baseline, live every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Central, 5... <laughs> No, Pacific Time Zone people, just stay asleep when this is on live and just catch the recording. Oh, I'm sorry exclusively on the Chris Bass YouTube channel. Whether it's news, the largest egg producer finds bird flu and chickens at a Texas plant, whether devastating tornadoes rip through the heart of the United States, inspiration, a breast cancer survivor completed the journey of chemotherapy, and now begins a future one of matrimony or sport. Michael Jordan is shown on a photo with Diddy. LeBron James has a video extolling the virtues of a Diddy party. This has been yet another <laughs> Beating a Dead Horse presentation. We got you covered. BS3 Network in association with Comey Media Incorporated proudly present The Morning Shift with Cole Johnson live every weekday. 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Central. Welcome back to Mentality, where it is the ultimate masculine safe space. With Wise LFA, I'm Cole Johnson. And yes, I know we talked about uh, him recently. We're going to talk about him again. Because we feel as though something is not clean in this water. But it's not going to be just him. I think we need to introduce the whole media. All of you need to walk under the learning tree. Now, fresh off of the 31-26 victory over North Dakota State, Colorado football head coach Deion Sanders in his second year has, his, has a victory under his belt, but you wouldn't think he was such a winner with how things have been recently with the media over the past few weeks. For one example, uh, Denver Post columnist Sean Keeler was an example of what uh, I guess uh, Sanders and the Colorado program decided that uh, he overstepped his bounds and now he has been banned from even attending press conferences that has Coach Prime in it. But you know that did not stop another person from speaking in the media. That's right, Blaze TV's fearless own Jason Whitlock. Wow. 
and so with all of what is taking place in the media, he had this to say, quote, Dion has finally picked a fight that's going to cost him. He's actually picked the wrong fight. He picked a fight with the media. This thing of him banning the reporter Sean Keeler is blowing up at Dion's face, and it's blown up in the University of Colorado's face. Colorado is all in on this releasing a statement saying Sean Keeler of the Denver Post can't talk or ask Dion any questions for the year. This is a terrible mistake by Dion and University. They've picked a war with the media, and Dion is thinking, the media needs me. I draw all these TV ratings. They all supported me last year when we started out 3-0. and Sports Illustrated gave me sports person of the year, even though the team finished in last place. I'm untouchable. It's only idiots like Jason Whitlock that criticize me. Everyone else loves me. Close quote. And I will begin by asking this, sir. Many have actually said that... Uh, Dion to, to begin his second year being the Colorado's head football coach. Um, the fact that he is in the program to help mentor young men, many are claiming that he's being hypocritical. Do you agree with many in the media that seems to now pick up this uh, this narrative that Coach Prime has become hypocritical? Oh man, I'm gonna address the elephant in the room, and that would be oh, oh, oh. that would be Jason Whitlock. Of course, he had to say elephant. <laughs> um, we 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 me and you both um we are in agreement with this. Yes, we um, are. Jason Whitlock hates black people. It's unfortunate, but he does. Because <laughs> not only has he attacked Coach Prime mm -hmm. on numerous occasions, numerous, yeah. numerous occasions, uh, this dude don't know when to shut the f up. You ain't never. Uh, he, he's, he's. Okay, do I do I agree with 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 the ban of the reporter? No, because. It's it's the reporters' first amendment right to report news or whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, but I also feel that the media made this circus. Mm. They created this circus. That's why I wanted to go right there. They they created the circus with all the bull. Like, like like he said last year, last year they were all in on Dion, which they which the media was, yes. And now this year, don't know what happened, but you got what's his name, um, Paul Feinbaum, whatever his name from ESPN. Yeah, Paul Feinbaum. He, he's attacking Dion. You got all these other people. Saying, Listen, um. <sighs> And we kind of knew this was going to happen. Eventually, we knew they were going to turn on Dion. Especially if the especially if the program showed that it was not going to be like, oh, I don't know, like a uh, like a Georgia or an Alabama, where they would be year after year a contender getting all the top athletes. But but again, he's just this is second year two in, in building a program which he had to build from scratch. Like like last year. He was yeah. the man. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's still building this. He added Warren Sapp. He added some other people to, to the coaching staff yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and Warren Sapp, I don't know what the f*** is your problem. You need you need to stop appearing on oh fearless. You really God. do. Because no. you're supposed no. to be Dion's boy, and you up here chumming it up with this f***ing enemy. Oh no, he's calling on Sap. Oh, so, no. Sap, you you either ride or die with me. That's how I would be, or you could <laughs> go ride and die with that fat. <laughs> <laughs> but now, now I want to get back to go to ahead. that fat. <laughs> the other fat. <laughs> not Warren Sap. The other one. Oh no, um, not the other one. Oh, 
<laughs> Why the other one? So, so, oh my gosh, a clip popped up. Oh, my. See, I tell you not to peruse social media. And here I go. Here I go. <laughs> Perusing social media. <laughs> Perusing social media. And this fat <laughs> appears on my screen. <laughs> and now he is accusing the Chicago sky of oh. racism. Oh, Lord. Uh, he's accusing Angel Reese racism, really. Um, Angel Reese, racism. My, my girl, my girl, Teresa Weatherspoon, the coach of the team, the okay. coach of the team, and the mm-hmm. shooting guard, Kennedy, um, whatever, Kennedy Child or something. I don't know. Anyway, I last name, yeah, I forgot her last name. I know you're talking about, but I forgot her last name. So and, and, I say and Carter, and, but I'm not sure. Yeah, Kennedy Carter. That's her. Yes, mm-hmm. that's her. Mm-hmm. Um, he has to come to the defense of um, Mabry, the tra- mm-hmm. the shooting guard that they traded away, because she's white. First of all, she's white. Let's put it out there. She's white, and she requested a trade. And his reason for his reasoning for the trade was because the toxic environment. That Chicago has put on the and and the racism that they shown has shown to this young lady. I, my man hates black people, so anytime he gets to attack black people, he will. And um, mm-hmm. he's just continuously just showing his true colors. He, he he's mm-hmm. first of all he's on the blaze. Black folk don't watch the blaze. So that just tells you where's his audience at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, true. and so I sometimes I just think he says for clickbait to, to get noticed because he, he's, he, he needs that attention. Yeah, you might be right, my friend. And now, thoughts from the throne. All right, all right, all right. I I, I got what I had to say out about that fat f- earlier. Um, <laughs> um, it, it's 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 it's. It's been a uh, um, a very interesting year. Um, I've had highs and lows, some real low, 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 low moments this year, and I've had some high moments this year. And um, I just want I just want everybody to know that um, I appreciate everyone out there that has been supportive and and been there and and. It's life is life, man. You can't, regardless of what happens in life, just just know that there, there, there's there are people that care for you. There are people out there that 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 want to see you succeed and 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 want the best for you. Um, I, I'm blessed that I, I I've. Surrounded myself with people that truly are beautiful human beings. They 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 truly are, um, and I, I'm just excited for what the future holds with with a lot of these relationships that I'm building and 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 a lot of people that um have shown me their, their true colors and 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 what I mean to them. And so thank you all 
for for being you and 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 just being the wonderful people that you are and and I'm I I am greatly appreciative of the relationships and and the and the friendships that we've been able to build yeah and um let's this keep let's let's take this finish this year out on a high note let's continue to, to grind and, and 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 just keep living life to the fullest man So it's been four months for me of doing the morning shift. And I can honestly say to you, in, ter in terms of content creation, it's the four best months of my entire time of doing it. And I've been doing this for almost 10 years. And the joy that I get is more than just being at the helm of my own content. I mean, heck, I, you know, I have a lot of control with this platform. I have a lot of control with another platform called Total Football Talk. So it's not that I clamor to have more control, so to speak. No. It's the fact that it taps into what I believe we are meant to do. It definitely is men, and that is to uplift and protect those on this planet. Uh, I have to thank my man, Cool McCain, uh, because he, for a good while, was like, man, you need to start your own morning show. Of course, my man, Wazelefe, who said the same thing for different reasons, but still said the same thing. And my total football talk partner, uh, Drew Willingham. Yeah, I have to say that because I really do believe it has been his commentary then and now. That lets me know that I am on the right track. So to all you three brothers, I thank you. And to those out there, only four months and things have really gone, gone well. And man, I'm looking forward to extending this platform to bigger and better things. Same thing with mentality, because we just got started. Scratch the surface. And those are thoughts from the throne. All right, sir. Any more uh, commentary you have before we let the mentality audience go, sir? No, no, I'm good. No, okay. nothing. You good? All right. Well, I'm glad, man. I'm good too. Uh, I'm I'm wonderful. Uh, look, everybody, thank you so much for liking, for sharing, for subscribing, for commenting, even because we definitely yes. love the comments as well. And thank you for hitting that notification bell so you can catch any and all content, whether it's mentality or anything else from the Real Wise TV YouTube channel and the Comedy Media Incorporated YouTube channel. We both appreciate it and you. Thank you so very much, guys. For Wise LF, I'm Cole Johnson here to say in parting as we always do. Our secret technique is that we always speak with mentality. We'll see you next week. Peace. That's 100.